politics, as well as on a couple of sectors that we discussed. Wishing you a good day ahead. But let's move on then. Macrotech developers, they receive a solid response for his QIP and they've raised close to 3,500 crores at around 1,026 rupees per share. To discuss this, uh, Abhishek Lodha, the MD and CEO of the company, joins us on the show. Hi, Abhishek. Morning. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, first up, you've raised some money. Good response. What do you use this money for? Uh, morning, Nigel. Uh, we were required to uh, get our uh, public free float up to 25%. And uh, the focus of the uh, company and the promoters was to ensure that we achieve this free float in a timely manner. Uh, so uh, because the company is very well capitalized and is generating strong internal cash flows, it did not have any need for primary capital. And with our focus on generating high ROEs, uh, raising primary capital would have been dilutive to uh, the ROEs. And therefore, the promoters have done a secondary sale. Uh, this is the first uh, QIP uh, uh, done for a secondary sale in the country. And through this uh, QIP, we've raised uh, about 3,550 crores. Uh, there being a secondary sale, this could largely be used by the promoters for various objectives. Okay, and what would those various objectives be? I mean, it's a large chunk, right? Avishek, hi, good morning. This is Sonia here. Uh, what would it be utilized for, say, over the next 12 months? Uh, the uh, promoters intend to use it uh, in a passive manner. Uh, the focus of the promoters continues to be 110% on growing the uh, real estate business under MDL. So this will be used uh, largely in passive ways. Mm. So when you say growing the real estate business, I mean, you got really good response for the QIP. So did you guide for any kind of long-term sales growth, any volume growth as well? And what kind of visibility do you have considering that real estate demand is back in a big way? So, yeah, we've uh, guided earlier and we continue to maintain uh, that this year we'll, uh, you know, be delivering pre-sales of about 11,500 crores. Over the medium term, we are looking at compounding our top line at around 20% and getting our ROEs close to 20%. So, that's really our medium term forecast because we believe that the depth of the Indian real estate market, especially in housing, is very, very significant. And we are only at the start of a long-term cycle, up cycle, which we think is a 15-year cycle, and we are only in year two. So really, the compounding of the top line and the growth in margins are both visible. Uh, and we believe that, you know, uh, that, of course, creates significant value for the uh, investors who have uh, invested and shown their trust in our company. This FY23 guidance of 11,500 crores you're holding on to because this is something that you spoke about earlier as well. Any indications on what FY24 would look like in terms of pre-sales? So, like I mentioned, we are guided to 20% compounding in the top line. So, uh, you know, the numbers will fall from there, but we'll issue formal guidance at the end of the current fiscal. All right. Uh, Abhishek, you know, residential demand has been very, very strong. But I want to word on the commercial side of things as well. Do you have more launches that are coming in there? If you could uh, tell us, you know, we've been hearing about some layoffs globally, some part of the commercial markets, maybe it could slow down. Your view on that? We are very focused on the housing business. We have, that has been a strategic choice the company has made and almost 90% of our sales come from the housing business. Yes. Uh, we have a, a growing business in warehousing and industrial spaces. Our presence in office and retail is modest. Mm. Uh, we have uh, to you know take into account global trends when it comes to office occupancy, not only driven by the layoffs, but potentially also driven by things like work from home. But at a more broader level, I believe that India's economy is going to do quite well over the next 10, 15 years. And therefore, office demand in India, as well as retail, or for that matter, any real estate asset class will do quite well. You could have short-term aberrations due to factor X or factor Y. But the medium and long term is very good for any asset class in the real estate space. Mm. Abhishek, hi. Uh, morning. Uh, for in, in Loda's portfolio, uh, what is the uh, size of the commercial portfolio? Uh, morning, Prashant. Uh, like I said, it's it's very small. Okay. We uh, typically, uh, you know, hold uh, we don't hold too many assets on our books in the office or, or retail segment. Okay. I think uh, you know our investors, and you know the quality of the names which have uh, been invested in our company for for quite some time now, including GIC Capital, uh, Nomura, uh, Ivano Cambridge, and now we've had you know other strong investors like UBS Ninety One, which uh, which is uh, earlier known as Investec. William Blair, Adia, et cetera, come in. And they really understand and appreciate our strategy, which is a housing-focused strategy. They they, realize, they really like the fact that we are play across all the price segments within housing, all the way from affordable to luxury. And they like the fact that we have an execution machine, which is constantly focused on churning 
uh, and delivering cash flows rather than holding on to asset. So really, it's a very differentiated business model. And this is what you know we've been uh, uh, recognized in the last 20 months. A real estate company has raised 10,000 crores from the world's best and, and most recognized investors uh, in three separate instances, our IPO, our primary QIP, and now the secondary QIP. We've done with our capital raises. We have no more capital raises to do because we've achieved our 75% free float. And therefore, uh, given the backdrop of the industry and our strong execution uh, machine and our clear strategy, we hope that you know we'll be able to deliver significant value uh, to these shareholders who have shown so much uh, trust uh, in us. Uh, you know, uh, there is a big slowdown underway in the UK. So I wanted to understand, is that affecting uh, the business in any way? And what is the status of the repatriation of projects from UK? Uh, Sonia, our UK projects uh, were completed. As we mentioned in our uh, September earnings update, we already paid off the US bond and there is no more liabilities attached to the Indian balance sheet. We have about 10 billion INR, which is required to be paid, uh, uh, which is required to be re repatriated back to India. And that money uh, came back partly last quarter. Some more will come this quarter and then each quarter over the next uh, 12 months. And so therefore, this 1,000 crores or 10 billion INR should all through uh, come to India in calendar year 2023. Mm. Abhishek, uh, you know, two-part question. One is interest rates have risen a little bit. Hopefully, we're nearing the end of that. At what stage do you think it becomes a bit of a problem with regard to demand? And in the city of Mumbai, you know, where do you expect max maximum traction? Uh, I'm a little confused as well, personally. Uh, what's, what's your sense? Which part is looking the best? You know, I, I look at the rentals sometimes, uh, occupancy that is, and try to derive something. But I'll be keen to hear uh, what you have to say on interest rates and where is the demand the best? We believe that uh, demand uh, is not very closely linked to interest rates. We'll have to take into account the fact that a mortgage is a 20-year, home loan is a 20-year product. And therefore, the starting interest rate makes little difference. Over the 20-year period, rates will go up and rates will go down. And therefore, homeowners, if they look at it very, very pragmatically, there's no reason to get swayed by the current interest rate. We believe that home demand is very closely tied to job creation and job confidence and not really closely linked uh, to, uh, to mortgage rates or interest rates. We've seen that as rates have risen from you know 6.5, 6.75% now to 8.3, 8.5%, demand has actually continued to accelerate because it's really driven by the underlying confidence uh, in the economy. So for anybody who tracks real estate or would like to get a pulse check on real estate, keep a check on the job sentiment. That is the best indicator of whether real estate sales and housing sales are going to grow or not. Um, in terms of demand within Mumbai, I think, you know, uh, as India's commercial capital with the quantum of infrastructure that is getting completed over the next 12, 18 months, uh, we believe that demand across Mumbai will continue to solidify. We think Mumbai will attract more jobs uh, as, as investors and companies see the quality of the new infrastructure, which is now being uh, close to completion. Um, and uh, therefore, demand remains resilient and strong across uh, all parts uh, of the city, across different price points. You know, the traction when it comes for, you know, 30 lakh homes is strong. The traction for one, two, three crore homes is strong. And even above that, uh, there, is, there is good demand. So quite frankly, Mumbai's supply-demand balance is very much tilted towards uh, having modest supply. The supply is consolidated. Consumers only want to buy from a few very trusted names, and Loda is at the top of that list. And uh, therefore, sales and demand from sure. the top developers remains quite strong. Uh, I do know that this is your business, so perhaps uh, you'd have to say that, but let's be honest, right? I mean, I've lived in Mumbai for almost 20 years now. With the way the traffic and the pollution situation is carrying out, I think this is one of the worst times to be living in Mumbai. So we can't run away from that fact. But I take your point. I mean, you have a business to run. I have one more question before we let you go. And uh, just reading from your press release, you said that having achieved 25% free float, the company in due course will be eligible for inclusion in various free, free float linked indices. Just wanted to ask you when, in terms of a timeline, um, ballpark, when would you expect the stock to be added in indices like, say, the FTSE and MSCI? Uh, uh, Sonia, we're already, Loda has already, Macrotex already part of the FTSE index. And obviously, given the increased free float, there will be a uh, uh, you know, change in the weightage uh, by FTSE. They do, I think, a quarterly review or, or something like that. Uh, MSCI inclusion, of course, is a much more complex uh, process, but we do expect 
uh, that you know uh, subject to uh, uh, how they operate we can't predict that but sometime over the next 12 months is a likely time when we will have inclusion yeah, all right, Abhishek, always good hearing your thoughts. Thanks so much for stopping by. It's been a good year for real estate companies like yours. Let's hope 2023 as well is as strong. Wish you all the best. For Thank the time being, though, we'll slip into a short break. When you come back, we'll connect with Anil Gupta, the CMD at KEI Industries, to discuss demand and business outlook from year on. Later on, we'll also connect with Sanjay Thakkar, the chairman at Landmark Cars. Remember, their IPO opens today.